My name is Hans van der Kwas from IHG Delft Institute for Water Education. I'm going to show you in this video how to do a field survey using different open source applications, QGIS, the Mergent platform and the Input app. This video is based on a tutorial that is on our OpenCourseWare website. You can find it at ocw.un-ihg.org and then you go to the course Open Source Software for Preprocessing GIS Data for Hydrological Models. There you can find it under the tab Field Service with QGIS, Merge-In and Input. The tutorial was developed together with Lutra Consulting who has developed the tools. The tutorial basically follows uh, the workflow that you need first preparation of the project, loading background layers, setting up the forms, apply the styling and uh, set the map themes, then transfer of the project data to the Mergen uh, cloud service and then it is explained how to work with the input mobile app. Uh, when you are in the field using the forms, using the GPS and uh, making edits and then synchronizing it back to the cloud service. So you can download the data from this tutorial uh, from this website. So let's first do that. We'll use here uh, Sentinel-2 data and we're going to make a true color image and a false color image as a background uh, for in the app. We'll use OpenStreetMap as a reference for topography uh, using an online and an offline uh, version uh, because we can be without network connection when we're in the field demonstrate how to use a vector layer also in the background. In this case we'll make a boundary of our study area and we'll make a survey layer. So let's download the file. I've unzipped it in a folder on my hard disk. Uh, let's go to QGIS. If you go to the browser panel uh, I'll first add the crop mapping folder that I made and where the Sentinel images as a favorite there it is. I can simply drag it to the map canvas. And uh, the first thing what we need to do is to uh, style this one. This is a map stack and it has the layers 2, 3, 4 and 8 of Sentinel where 2 is blue, 3 is green, 4 is red and 8 is near infrared. But it is of course stored in layers 1, 2, 3 and 4. In the layer styling panel we can now set the proper band. So we want 3 2, 1 for red, green and blue to get a true color image. This looks nice already, but uh, in other cases where you're not happy with the contrast, you can uh, change that by stretching, changing the stretching options here and changing the minimum maximum values that it uses for the stretching. And you can choose to stretch to the whole range in the raster or to use uh, the area that you're zoomed in on the map canvas. In this case we'll leave it like this. We cannot uh, use this image as such, um, that would not be very uh, efficient on the phone, so we have to change it to an XYZ tiles file, and we're going to create a so-called MB tiles file. Therefore we need a plugin. We go to the plugin manager and we look for the tiles XYZ plugin, which is also developed by Lutra Consulting, which has developed uh, uh, the Mergin cloud servers and the app that we're going to use, the input app. So this plugin adds to the processing toolbox the tiles XYZ processing plugin and we have there generate XYZ tiles, MB tiles. When we click there in the dialog we choose for the extent a layer extent of the original Sentinel image and we set the zoom level to 15. Um, why 15? Well it's an optimum between uh, the resolution and the file size. I've experimented a bit with that, so you have to do a bit of trial and error, but in this case 15 works well. You can also see that we can put a range of uh, zoom levels. That will make the file bigger, but then you can more efficiently zoom in and out. So it's all a trade-off. For our purpose, uh, just one zoom level of 15 gives nice results. We keep the other things at default and we save it to our folder as Sentinel. True color. 
mbtiles file and rerun the algorithm. There it is. In the browser panel we refresh it and we see there uh, two files added and we add the raster with the mbtiles. Go back to our layers and uh, we're going to compare the result and we see that indeed 15 is a good trade-off and there's not much loss of the resolution uh, while it's still efficient in tiles. So we're going to repeat this whole procedure to create a false color image where we use a different band combination. So we go back to the styling panel and there I choose band 432 as combination where red is the near infrared which results in uh, bright red colors for um, parcels with crops that are growing, so the real green parcels. So we choose again the layer extent from the original Sentinel, put the zoom level back to 15, and we save this layer as Sentinel false color. So we have now two MB tiles uh, that can be used in our project. We now no longer need the original Sentinel image. So we can uh, remove that uh, from the list. Of course, we're first going to check the result. And also here we see that there's not much uh, loss with the original. So we're going to uh, now remove the Sentinel original uh, map stack. And we are also going to remove it from the folder because the whole folder will be in the end synchronized with the uh, web service and with the mobile phone. So we don't need uh, that file. We need to remove all the files that we don't need to be synchronized. Okay, the next step is to add an OpenStreetMap. If you go in your browser panel, you find OpenStreetMap under XYZ tiles, which gives you access to the online uh, web map. And this is useful to include in our app to have some orientation with a topographical map. Now that's basically all you need to do for the online layer. So I rename it to OSM online so it's clear that this is the online one because we're going to create an offline version for if we don't have internet connectivity in the field. And we do that in a similar way as for the Sentinel because we're going to create the uh, XYZ tiles, the MB tiles file. First, there, uh, we have to set the projection of this project to uh, the web mercator. That is because um, the MB tiles use that uh, projection. So, set project CRS. Uh, MB tiles use it in this case to uh, get the right uh, extents. So, in the processing toolbox, we choose generate the MBT tiles the extent from one of the sentinels because we want to have the same area covered by our offline OpenStreetMap and you see that it's uh, projection 3857 web mercator and we put the zoom level also here on 15 which I uh, tried with trial and error and gave good results so when we uh, save that file to the uh, MB tiles, I call this one OSM offline. Then uh, the tool will just fetch all the information at the right zoom level from the server. Let's complete it. So we go to the browser and we refresh again like we did before. And we can now add the offline OpenStreetMap layer. So we have now an online and an offline OpenStreetMap layer. You can see that when we switch off the online one, we see that the offline one is fitted to the extent of the Sentinel images. And we switch back the projection of the project to the UTM that we'd like to use in this project. There are many other ways to add online maps. Uh, we can uh, use uh, for example, the Quick Map Services plugin, or use the other WMS services, for example. It is a good moment to save your file, save your project, and um, 
For our purpose, we need to save it as a QGS because that's the format supported by our workflow. Now, the next thing that we are going to do is to uh, digitize uh, the boundary layer of our study area. So we're going to create a new geo package layer to create the vector. And we call that uh, survey. That will be also the database the geo package that we're going to use for uh, the survey layer that we create later. So the table name is boundary. That's basically the name of the layer. Set it to polygon. Keep the projection and we don't add attributes because we don't need it. We just want a simple polygon. This is of course a hypothetical case. So I switch to editing and I'll add just a quick and dirty polygon that we want to see in our app as the boundary of our study area. It's important to have a boundary of the study area because uh, then in the field you will not do observations beyond. You see that the feature ID is automatically generated. That uh, is typical for a geo package or a database, spatial database. I'm going to change the styling. These stylings are also taken over by uh, the app. So I'll make it transparent. Make the polygon boundary red and I make it a bit thicker. So we'll also be visual like this in the app. The next step is to create uh, the survey layer. And that's basically the, the core of our app. That's where we are going to collect the data. So save the project and uh, create layer. And we're going to add it to the existing geo package. So I choose that as a database, the survey, and for table name, uh, we'll make it a point, and as table name, we choose their um, ground truth, because this is uh, our case here. We want to collect ground truth data for uh, remote sensing classification. Keep the projection, and now we are going to create the attributes that we want for uh, our crop mapping purpose. Here I use an example that comes from the FAO uh, crop mapping uh, trainings that we, uh, we gave. So the first one that we need is the observation number, and that's a whole number, and we add it to the field list. Then the next field that we want is the observer name. It's always important to uh, tag the name of the observer, because people have different uh, ways of estimating, for example, vegetation cover. And always if you have questions, you can go back to the observer. We need an attribute date and time. It's very important to log the date and the time in the field. And uh, that's a date and time um, data type. So that's easy. We're also capturing a picture in the field. And we tag that as text data because that's needed for the widget that we're going to create later. And I put uh, the amount of characters at 80. That should be sufficient. We make an attribute land cover type. That's also a text data, same size. Then the next one is the crop type. Similar properties. Then what kind of water source is used in the crops? What is the irrigation method? We want to lock that also in the attribute table. What is the coverage of the vegetation? There we want a decimal number. It's a percentage, it's a real value. And we add one on a size limitation of uh, 300, uh, 300 meters. And that will be a, a checkbox where we have uh, 1 for true and 0 for false. So it can be a whole number. And then we have finally some notes where we can write extra observations. We make that a bit bigger, 200 characters. So this is our attribute table. And uh, because we add it to an existing geo package, we click add new layer. So now both boundary and ground truth are part of uh, our geo package. So for ground truth, we can uh, define a styling. So we add an extra simple marker 
and we are going to style the first simple marker make it a bit bigger so uh, it's very important that it's uh, very nicely visible on the app so don't make it too small and use some colors that you can distinguish probably it needs a little bit of exercise to get the right uh, styling there there are many options in QGIS for styling and for the second simple marker we use a cross so what I want is a crosshair with a circle so we really uh, focus on a certain point make it a bit thicker also for the first uh, simple marker and we can change also the colors to uh, blue for example And there we are, styling. That will also be used in the app. Now the final step that we need to do here is to um, design the widgets. So we use an uh, attributes form and we can use there uh, the FID. We really don't use that as a widget. So uh, we're going to hide that one. That's the one that's automatically added. Remember, we didn't add that, but that came from the geo package. So we put that on hidden, so we don't see that anymore. Then we have observation number. That's the observation number that we can fill in ourselves. The alias uh, field here is to if we want to give it another name. But when the names are okay, we just leave it like it is. And as widget type, we choose here the uh, text edit so people can fill in the number and we put a constraint there that it can't be null so it has to be filled in then for observer name we also want a text edit and we also want it as a constraint not to be null then we go to uh, date and time it's recognized that it needs the date time widget, which is nice. And we're going to change uh, how the widget displays because we want the notation a little bit different. Uh, we want day, month, year, and then our minute, second. And we don't want a calendar pop up. And it should not be null. And a default value we put dollar now so uh, we can get the current date and time filled in automatically in the widget. Then for picture, we choose widget type attachment. It's important that we set it to relative paths because it's going to be used on the phone. And we're going to change the integrated document viewer to image. And we also want it not null. Then the land cover type is going to be set to a value map. And with the value map we can basically code uh, values to different options. So here we put different land uses. And in the app you will of course have nice uh, drop down menus for this. So we also check here uh, that it's not null. And we put the default value on 1 because our interest is uh, crop mapping. And the preview says already crop land. Then we go to the crop type. Similar way, we also want to drop down uh, menu in our app. So we choose value map and we fill it in with different crops that we have in our uh, study area. Now we need a special uh, constraint here, and we can put an uh, expression there, because we only want this crops to be chosen if the land cover type is on uh, crops. So land cover type equals, and then we choose one, which was the crops. So we can only fill this in 
when the land cover type equals 1. That's what it says. And that's also taken over by the input app. Copy this because I need a similar constraint later. Let's go to water source. Also a value map. And similar constraint. Then we'll go to uh, crop irrigation uh, method. Also a value map. And there we also have the constraint but we add an uh, extra constraint to it. So, of course, uh, land cover type needs to be 1. But water source needs to be 2, that there is irrigation. So only if both criteria are uh, true, then uh, we can fill this one in. We will add uh, coverage, which is the vegetation cover. We can uh, use an alias for this to make it clearer in the table what it uh, means, also in the app. And we can use a widget here uh, for a range and use a special one, the slider. Uh, not all these widgets are supported by input. You'll see later that this one is uh, not supported yet. They're working on uh, these uh, widgets. I'll put it from 0 to 100 with a step size of 5. Then there's the size, which is a minimum requirement to indicate for the parcel if the field size is uh, big enough, which is larger than 300 by 300 meters. And we use a checkbox, and when uh, it's true, it's checked, it's yes, and when it's not checked, it's no. There it is. And the last one, the last widget is for the notes. There needs to be a free text field where we can use multiple lines, and uh, that's it. So this is our uh, field form. Now let's check in the attribute table how this looks like. Now the final thing that we need to do is uh, to set the boundary background layer to read only. So the background vector layers need to be set to read only. And the ground truth of course needs to be edited in the app, so that's not read only. Based on this the app can uh, identify the survey layers, because they are not read only. And the other thing we need to do is to now define um, the map themes. And map themes are basically presets uh, that you can define in QGIS to uh, fast visualize a uh, combination of layers. So the first one is uh, Sentinel True Color where we have the vector boundary polygon layer and the True Color Sentinel activated and of course the survey layer. And we make one now for the false color so we uncheck uh, the other things and we have the false color there with the boundary and the survey layer checked. So we call that one Sentinel false color. And then we create one for the OpenStreetMap uh, offline. And one for the OpenStreetMap online. Now you can check it by uh, just switching between these different uh, map themes and see if it works like we want. So this is the offline, then we have the Sentinel false color and the Sentinel true color. So in this way these map themes will also be used in the app. We save the project. Now we need to install the Mergent plugin which uh, links QGIS to the cloud service that is called Mergent. And Mergin is also developed by uh, Lutra Consulting. So that will add in the browser panel uh, Mergin folder. And there you can configure uh, your credentials and the link to the server. 
and once you've done that you can uh, check all the projects that are on the server or my projects if you already have some projects you'll see it there and like in my case and uh, if you have a new project click right and you can choose uh, create new project and type the name so we call this one crop mapping it's a public one you select a folder and then it starts uh, synchronizing this folder with uh, the cloud service of Mergin. Mergin project created successfully, so that's great. So we find it under my projects. And you see there are cloud, so it's also in the cloud. And when we go to the cloud, we sign in. Then uh, you can find uh, the project crop mapping in your uh, personal projects and here are all the files. So the next step is to synchronize this with uh, the input app. You can install the input app from the Google Play Store and I've already installed it and this is a previous project but after you're logged in you can see your own projects under uh, my projects you see your projects and there's the crop mapping project and we download it from the server to synchronize it with the mobile phone and then under home we can tap it and uh, it will load first time it takes a bit in the future it's caches and we see that the GPS signal is green uh, although we are not in this region in this demo uh, we can tap a polygon, the background polygon of the boundary, and it gives us the attributes. Not so interesting here. And we can uh, switch map themes. We switch to the OpenStreetMap offline or online. So very useful when we are navigating in the area. And here's the. Uh, map theme where we have the sentinel false color that's useful to identify which uh, parcels are vegetated these, these are in bright red because the near infrared and we can choose the true color sentinel so when we want to add a point we tap record now it will move to our GPS location which is very far away because we're just simulating this case um, but I've, when you find back your uh, place you can uh, tap uh, on this uh, move on the spot where you want to place uh, the marker by moving the map around basically with your fingers and once you've found the right parcel you uh, tap add point and then you can fill in the observation form that we uh, designed in QGIS if you click uh, the date time button then it will fill in the current date time you can add a picture and you can choose here what the land use is. In red you see the fields that are depending on the answers of the other fields. So if I choose here rain fat I cannot fill in the irrigation method. Type in the vegetation cover. The slider uh, widget is not yet implemented but for the field size we have the, the toggle and that is uh, implemented. And we can make some notes. And then when we are satisfied, we do save. And the point is placed on the map with the symbology that we've chosen. If we tap the point, it will give us a quick preview of some attributes that we uh, chose. And we can now still edit the form. So let's change the irrigation method to a sprinkler. And then it's saved. And then the final step is to synchronize this back to the server. So if I go to my project, you see the synchronization button and I can synchronize it. So in this tutorial, I've shown how to uh, use QGIS merge in and the input app uh, to do field surveying. Um, if you want to know more about QGIS, then uh, visit my open courseware or uh, come to IHC Delft for a short course. And uh, we can also organize tailor-made trainings. 
If you want to see more videos, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.